California edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. Today we are in Ventura, part of our roadshow throughout the state of California. We are joined by Tony Vallejo. He is a council member in Goleta. I was just in Goleta visiting my niece who goes to UCSB. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how Goleta really kind of consumes that that coastline. It's really integral yes. to the UCSB community. It really is. A lot of people think Isla Vista, which is the city right. bordering UCSB, is part of Goleta, and it, it actually isn't. But there, you can walk from Goleta into Isla Vista. Let's put it that way. Which is what we did. Yeah. We had lunch at a wonderful Thai mm -hmm. restaurant, and yeah. I just was very taken by the entire community. You mentioned Isla Vista, mm -hmm. and I also walked through Isla Vista. And I walked in front of that Delhi Mini Mart mm -hmm. where we know that a UCSB student lost his life. Yes. Uh, three students lost, well, three students lost their lives on the streets, on the three streets. in the apartment complex nearby. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Goleta is so much part of the UCSB community. How are you and your community doing? Well, you know, it, it was a shock to all of us because, you know, we all think our homes are safe and in, Goleta is extremely safe. Right. Um, to see that happen, you, you never expect it. Um, I went to school there and I lived in right. Isla Vista for a few years and I can tell you that community is a is a lot different than when I went to school there. There's there's a little more danger out there and even a better school. A better school. <laughs> um, still a great school, but the, the community, Isla Vista has some challenges. You know, you have a transient kind of population where they're only there for four years. Right. It makes it hard to affect real change because mm. the people that are affected by even this you know, traumatic shooting are going to be gone in a couple right. of years. And so the the momentum to fix things it becomes difficult. But I understand that in Goleta, you are working with Isla Vista, which is actually an unincorporated Santa Barbara County. Exactly. It's not even part of the city of Santa Barbara mm -hmm. or Goleta to look at these issues. Certainly, there's, there's an Isla Vista Safety Committee that's recently been formed with students, with county member, county government, and some of our own city leaders. Mm -hmm. Our mayor, Michael Bennett, is on that committee, I believe. Um, we want to help wherever we can. Um, both because, you know, so a lot of us went to school there and right. remember it fondly and because a lot of our kids are there. And even the kids who aren't going to UCSB, um, you know, our, our high school kids, we don't like it sometimes, but sometimes they trickle into Isla Vista to enjoy the nightlife, if you will. Sure. And we want to see that area safe and, and there's impacts. Halloween is a great right. example. It's, it's, we actually had to close streets in our city this year in anticipation of them just being overrun with parking problems and then those kids returning from their festivities, right. let's put it that way, and creating havoc in our neighborhoods. So we actually, Mother Nature did us a big favor with the rainstorms. <laughs> Amen. But uh, on, yeah, on, on many levels. On many levels. Right. But um, we actually had closed parking in the in the neighborhoods adjacent to IV because our, our constituents had complained so loudly about all the trouble they have in the evening when these kids come back. I have to think that being so close to IV and UCSB is a blessing and a curse for Goleta. It is. I mean, talk about an economic engine. It is. I mean, I walked into Goleta mm -hmm. for lunch. Yeah. I mean, that, that those are sales tax dollars. But still, you know, it, it's a population mm -hmm. that is looking for fun. They, they certainly are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, again, I went to school there. I looked right. for fun while I was right. there. I, it was. And they should have some fun. That's part of the college experience. Um, it's it's keeping it safe for them. And, and and in fairness, it's not just UCSB. A large population of city college students right. live out there too. Santa, and that's another great school, but they're not. You know, you, get, you put a bunch of 19 to 22 year olds out there unsupervised. There's going to sure. be a few that don't know how to behave yet. But now we're several months off of that horrific incident. Mm -hmm. And is your community healing? Is there support? Is there fear? Where is the greater UCSB community today? I, I think it's healing. Um, you know, that's part of the blessing, I guess, with having a transient kind of population because a lot of those kids graduated and moved on, and now we have freshmen mm -hmm. who just saw it in the news and probably right. don't remember it. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're getting better, and I think it's just trying to see what we can do to avoid it. You know, we had the, and I already forgot the young man's right. name, the one who drove his BMW down the street a few years ago. Um, and killed several people, or at least seriously hurt people. Right, I remember that. So that city has, well, it's not a city, yes. but that area has some challenges, and we have to do whatever we can to help. And what's remarkable about that incident is you came on to the Goleta City Council, what, what a week later? It, relatively mean, soon after that, yeah. It was yeah. pretty quick after that. Actually, I think it was right before, because okay. I can remember 
hearing all the sirens and at my house, my, my home is only a couple miles from Isla Vista itself. Mm. And then I can remember getting some emails from city staff. They like to keep us surprised of big right. things about that happening. I think it was right. I think that's that And, and so how was that for you? You're a new council, I mean, literally mm -hmm. a new mm -hmm. council member, which we'll talk about, you were appointed. <laughs> but how was that entering this buzzsaw? Well, it, it was, you know, the city itself was was unfor was fortunately unfortunately mostly just a bystander you know we we right. uh, wasn't our law enforcement officers who were dealing with it per se and mm -hmm. really it was we were mostly we were just fairly saddened by it as well just like right. it, the entire Galita community was you know right. these are kids we probably knew or saw and I you know it, it's a small town I, I you know just about everybody had a friend of a friend at least who was involved in it I can tell you right. I did too and it's it's scary to people you know suffer. So let's talk about your appointment okay. to the Goleta City Council. It's always an interesting development. Mm -hmm. I believe, I don't know about Goleta specifically, but oftentimes a uh, city can have a choice whether it wants to appoint or hold an election in the case of a vacancy. Mm -hmm. In Goleta's case, was that choice presented or did the charter say what had to happen? No, we had a choice. If we could appoint somebody in, in a certain time window, I believe it was six weeks, but I might be wrong right. about that. Then the, it, when I say we, if the council could agree, then, then they could do that. If they couldn't agree on one person, then they would have to do a special election, which of course gets expensive, right. and it leads to a vacancy on the, on, the, on the council until that happens. So you have a council of four. Mm. There's, there can be a lot of tie votes at that case. So talk to us about the process. Did you apply? Yes, I did. I, you know, I was now, actually- What was wrong with you at that moment? <laughs> what made you decide you have a I, nice CPA I, I, practice? I'm, what were you I'm, thinking? I'm still trying to figure <laughs> exactly. that out. You know, I, I, I had become somewhat involved in the politics mm. of the city. I mm. was I was the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce last ah, year, so so I kind mm. of got exposed to that. Um, and I've always been somebody who feels like you should help your community. I've mm. sat on a lot of boards and uh, volunteered a lot of, of organizations. Mm. So um, the seat came open. I was already had already kind of announced that I was at least exploring the option of running in November. Ah. So I people knew I was thinking about it. Um, and so the seat came open. There were actually seven of us that applied. The council had to interview each of us individually and then kind of do an open voting thing, which... Right, and as I understand it, that interview has to be public. It was, everything was public. Because of the Brown Act, they can't interview you no. individually, privately. Yeah. Now, yeah, we're a small town, so everybody knew every all the candidates, right. and they had probably chatted with them, briefly. not not no, no, about that, but course. just in no, general, no, course, you know, different events. Course. So yeah, the, the interviews were public. Um, the actual deliberations of the council were just regular count. So you're sitting there. Are you seeing the votes tally? Yeah. Well, was, you would just see people raise their hands. Yes, no. And um, so they, it took about four votes for them to come to a compromise of, you know, because there was, there, was, there was a lot of great candidates. And I was impressed by the seven people actually took time out of the day. Because you needed three to win. You needed three out of four. Because you had four. Yeah. And I got the three. So uh, That's remarkable. So how has it been? It's been, you know, several months yes. now. What do you think? Now you're on the other side. You know, it's it's been a lot of learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, understanding the nuances of what we can and can't do as a city. I think everybody right. thinks you're city council, you can do whatever you want in the city, and of course we can't. Uh, there's some limitations there. Um, it's been it's been an eye-opening experience having people stop me on the street and say, "What are we going to do about <laughs> this?" And, right. You know, and I encourage people to do that. You know, I might not have the answer, um, but I'll at least look into it for them. And it's it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's. It certainly helps that I, I'm a, a city councilman in a city that is doing so well, mm. that's been you know financially stable for a long time. Um, it's a new city, so we, we're still kind of spreading our wings. And when you say new, were you recently incorporated? We or? incorporated just 12, 13 years well, ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. yeah, about the same mm -hmm. time I bought my house in Goleta, we Perfect. incorporated. So uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm growing up along with Goleta. I like here. it. I like it. So it's it's been it's been a great experience. And the, the one thing I tell people about what surpri not surprised me, but right. the biggest thing I took out of it was how how professional and how smart and how great our city staff is. Everybody mm -hmm. on that staff has impressed, and that's probably why our city's doing and, so and well. And what folks may not realize if you're not involved in city government is really the staff yeah. runs the operations of the city. You're a policy maker, mm -hmm. but it's not your full-time job. No, it's not. I, I, I have my own practice, right. uh, CPA practice that is. How's I, April gonna be for you, city council that, that, and That's part of what season. I have to figure out. You know, they ask me if I'm gonna run again and I say, I wanna survive a tax season and then I'll then tell you'll you. see. His uh, name is Tony Vallejo. He is a new member of the Galita City Council. My name is Brad Palmer. It's from Ventura, California. It's California Edition.